everyone. A very warm welcome to our service this morning at St Anne with Emmanuel Church. I'm Reverend Maureen Collins and I'll be leading our service today as we continue to look at the life of Abraham's family in the Old Testament. And later in our service, we will be having Holy Communion. Not very many notices today, you'll be pleased to know. Uh, we continue on Wednesday with our pilgrim group looking at the Beatitudes and on Saturday morning our table talk on Zoom and of course we stop to pray at 11 o'clock on Thursday mornings wherever we are. So as we begin our worship today let us pray. I invite you to join in the words on the screen. Almighty God to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we come into the presence of Almighty God, we're aware of our own shortcomings. And so right at the beginning of our service, we're going to stop for a moment and say sorry to God for the ways that we've failed him. So let's just take a moment to be quiet, to reflect. And we join in the words on the screen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And may the Father forgive you through the death of the Son, and empower you to live in the life of the Spirit, this day and always. Amen. And we're going to praise that God who forgives us in the song, Praise the Lord, Let the People Rejoice. And this is specially chosen because it was Rose Hawley's funeral hymn at her funeral this week. So with her in mind, praising with her, let's sing together.
gospel reading is brought to us by Blessing, Eddie, Jackie, Ali and Favour. This morning's gospel reading is from Matthew 13. Lord, hear the gospel of our Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A father went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other the seed fell on a gusso where it was produced a crop. A hundred and sixty thirty times. What was the sower? Whoever has ears, let them hear. Later, Jesus said, Listen then to what, she, to what the parables of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what was sown into his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The, w the one who received the seed is that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, it lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is a man who hears the word but worries of this life and deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the seed fell on a good soul, refers to someone who has the word and understand it. This is the one who produced a crop, yelling a hundred and sixty or thirty times. What was his soul? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, children might like to have some activities to do with the parable of the sower. So we've got some pictures to uh, colour in. Um, we've got a puzzle here that you can find all of these on the website. And for everybody who's interested, we have got some very clever paper that has got seeds in it. And so we'd love to see you Put this in water, in soil, and see if you can grow some flowers from it. So adults, if you want to have a go at it, you contact me and I'll try and get some um, of this paper to you. And children, I hope to see what pictures of what you've grown in the days to come. And there'll also be some activities on the website to do with um, our story we're going to have later and the family tree of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and I think some of the adults might like to have a go at some of these too especially the one where you've got to fill in the gaps yourself see what you've learned over the last few weeks so do have a go at that if you can have a look on our website at the activity page and now our second reading is brought to us by Ethel good morning church today's reading is taken from Genesis 25 verses 19 to 34. This is the account of the family line of Abram's son Isaac. Abram became the, f the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Re Rebekah, daughter of Behuel, and the Har Aram mean of Paddan, Haram, and sister of Laban and Haramin. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jolted 
each within her and said, why, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said unto her, two nations are in your womb and two people from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the elder will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau eel. So he, he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to him. The boy grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the hoping country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Who had a taste of wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was coming, cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famish. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I am famish. This is why he was called Edom. Jacob replied first, Sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first, so he swore and hold to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave, gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Ethel, for that reading. We're continuing finding out about Abraham's family and last week we heard the love story of Isaac and Rebecca, a marriage made in heaven. They loved one another, they trusted God who guided them to each other. They married when Isaac was 40, uh, but Rebecca, like Sarah, her mother-in-law, didn't conceive early, easily. Um, but after 20 years and Isaac's prayer, she becomes pregnant with twins. However, even in the womb, they seem to be struggling against each other, much to their poor mother's distress. When she cries out to God about this discomfort for her longed for children, they're causing her this problem. She gets this very strange word from God. And so we find out more about Esau and Jacob and what they are going to be like when they are born. So she said, she is told that they are two nations struggling together and Esau is going to be the older one but he's going to be the servant and Jacob is the younger one but he's going to be stronger. Esau is hairy and red-skinned and Jacob comes out grasping his brother's heel. Esau is given this name because it means hairy and he also becomes the leader of the Edomites and Edom means red. Whereas Jacob gets the lovely name, which means grasping or deceitful. Esau becomes a hunter and an outdoor guy, whereas Jacob is much more stay at home guy who loves cooking. But of course, Esau is loved more by his dad, Isaac whereas Jacob is loved more by his mum, Rebecca. And Esau seems to be careless and unthinking about things, whereas Jacob is sneaky and manipulative. Not, not the best people to have a story about, really. So what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn some things about family life, can't we? It all started so well, didn't it? this love story guided together by God. And yet, in today's reading, we find out that things began to go wrong after these much-loved children were born. 
first thing that goes wrong is that these brothers are competitive and jealous. Now, there's nothing wrong with a bit of competition, but there is when it's putting others down and disrespecting other people. And that is not right, that kind of competition. And then the parents, the parents have favourites. Now, I get that families are annoying. Uh, I do live in one. Um, of course, there are times when we get annoyed, maybe have a good old shouting match. And yes, there are times when parents will get cross with one child um, and pleased with what another does. All these things happen. That's normal family life. But this, this idea of forgiving and forgetting and moving past it is something which needs to operate in families as well as in friendships and with our neighbours and friends and even in churches too. In this case, the, the problems caused by this family division have echoed on through the ages. First Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael's family, we hear in 20, chapter 25 verse 18, lived in hostility towards all the tribes related to them. And indeed, those hostilities continue even now in the Middle East. And then Jacob and Esau. This is not the last time that Jacob manipulated a situation to get what he wanted from his brother. And the next time, after stealing his father's final blessing, Esau actually plots to kill him. And he, Jacob has to run away. And it's many, many years before there's any sort of reunion between them. So divisions in families, favouritism and unhealthy competitiveness don't do anyone any good and they can affect generations to come. And it's up to us to try and break those cycles. With God's help, we don't have to make the same mistakes our parents did. With God's help, we don't have to carry forward resentment from hurts that we've received. And with God's help, we can move on in his love. So it affects our family, but also there were issues here of personal character. Jacob was a deceiver and a manipulator. He was willing to do whatever to get what he wanted, even to his brother's disadvantage. Yes, we can be ambitious, we can want success in what we do, but it should never be at the expense of other people. Jacob, on more than one occasion, deliberately took advantage of his brother, leaving Esau much worse off than him. He used his brother's weakness to get what he wanted. Now, Jesus told us to treat others as we would want to be treated. Paul in Philippians tells us to think of the interests of others above ourselves. As Christians, this is our calling, to think of the good of others and not manipulate them to our advantage. But Esau, you know, he wasn't totally innocent in this either. He gave away his birthright for a bowl of stew. Not very sensible, really. Not thought through. He was ruled by his stomach. Now, we all get hungry, but really, you know. We need to know what gifts we have been given and appreciate them and look after them. We also need to know what's important. We need to really think about what matters. I know that during this current crisis, many people have begun to think about what is really important and they've discovered that it's not the car or the clothes or the material things, but much more important is their family, their friends and neighbours. And people have started thinking in this life-death situation we've been in about God, about prayer, about what really matters there. And so in all our families, in our friendships, in our relationships, we should be thinking about what really matters. Not trying to emulate the mistakes of Abraham and Isaac's family, but instead to follow the advice of Paul writing to the Philippians. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. 
Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Let's just take a moment's quiet as we reflect on those things and what God might be saying to us through them. And let us move into prayer. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we put our own needs and desires above other people. Forgive us when we think we're better than other people. Forgive us when we don't try to forgive others and when we are resentful and bear grudges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for families that are divided and broken. We pray for those who have been hurt by parents or partners. We pray for strength and forgiveness in marriages and in families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those hurt by the evils of racism, as well as all forms of prejudice. We pray for those suffering through illness, stress or loss of income because of COVID-19. We pray for those suffering bereavement, especially remembering Kev and his family today. Bring each one the comfort and strength to go on, moving forward in your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us never to use other people for our own ends. Help us to value and use all the talents and gifts we have been given to make the world a better place. Help us to follow your ways, Lord Jesus, in all our relationships with family, friends and the communities in which we live and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, let your love be seen in us. And let your love sweep through this nation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And still in that prayerful attitude, we join in our next song, Let There Be Love Shared Among Us. As those who share God's love, we also share our faith. So let us declare together our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high We believe in one God, 
Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we're going to share the peace with one another. We are together even though we're apart. So my friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And now before we go into communion, we're going to sing again as we're gathered in God's presence, in his love. There is a quiet understanding, so let us join together as we sing. There's a quiet understanding when we're gathered in the Spirit. It's a promise that he gives us when we gather in his name. gathered together though apart we thought that for our holy communion service we would come into church although we're not allowed to gather together in church we can come into church to video and so we thought we'd do that for our service today so let's take a moment of quiet as we enter into our communion so my friends the lord is here his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every good gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light with signs of faith and words of hope, he touched the untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to the table with friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks and broke it and said, this is my body given for you all. After supper, he took the cup and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this wine, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you 
to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours. For ever and ever. Amen. 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 So as we come to our spiritual communion, some of you may have elements at home that you want to take to remember Jesus. Others of you may just want to quietly reflect. So we're going to pray together the prayer about our spiritual communion. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all you have done for me on the cross and for your glorious resurrection. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Beloved Saviour, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. The body of Christ was broken for all of us. And Jesus' blood was shed for all of us. Eternal God, comforter of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so for all Jesus has done for us and won for us, we're going to praise him now in our final hymn, O oh, Praise Ye the Lord. <laughs> Oh, praise ye the Lord, 
as our service draws to a close, a blessing. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts this week. May his peace comfort you and his hope sustain you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all you love and care for this day and always. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed being with us this week and we hope to see you next week. God bless. Thank you.